Hey everyone, welcome to Pushing the Limits this week. Uh, fantastic to have you with me. Today I have Alex Tyson, uh, who is an expert on infrared saunas. So we're going to dive into the benefits uh, of infrared saunas, what to look for, um, very interesting research around sauna use um, and the difference between steam saunas and infrared saunas. So a really deep dive into this interesting space something that I love saunas so it's a big part of my regime for sure my anti-aging and longevity regime uh, before we head over to the show just to remind you to, to uh, check out all our programs what we do my health consulting if you're dealing with a health issue that you're wanting help with or if you're wanting to just have high performance in your sporting endeavors um, please check out what we do at lisatamati.com and hit the work with us button you'll see all the programs there um, corporate speaking motivational speaking corporate wellness programs, epigenetics, DNA testing, run coaching, um, and health optimization coaching. So make sure you check all that out, as well as our anti-aging uh, supplement regime um, and range there. We have nmnbio.nz, where NMN is a company founded by Dr. Alina Serenova, who have had on the podcast a number of times, and that is one range. And then we also have a range over on lisatarmity.com in our shop there. So make sure you check out all those products if you're wanting the best. I went out into the world, got the best stuff for my family and for me, and now I get to share them with you. So now we're going to head over to the show with Alex Tyson. Do enjoy. And welcome back to Pushing the Limits this week. I have a fantastic guest for you who is going to be sharing some fabulous insights about something called infrared saunas. So welcome to the show, Alex. Alex, lovely to have you. And you are from Found Space. Um, and you're an expert on everything infrared saunas. So we're going to dig into the science and the information about infrared saunas today. Cool. That sounds great. Yeah, Thanks I'm really for on, Lisa. It's a pleasure. Oh, I'm stoked. And you are our podcaster as, as well. Tell us yeah. a little bit about your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. It's called Finding Space and it's powerful health conversations, you know, kind of cutting through the noise. There's a lot of noise in the health and wellness space. There's a lot of nonsense out there and I get people on health professionals from around the world, some scientists and things, and we just have real down to earth conversations about things we can do to take our health to a higher level. Absolutely. That's what I'm all about too, is just sharing the latest and greatest in science and information so that we can sort of uh, biohack our way to a healthier, happier future. Uh, and a part yeah. of that is infrared sauna. So <laughs> can you give us a little bit of a background story about you and your family and uh, how you got to be the, the CEO of Found Space and what you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. So my parents started with saunas, the infrared saunas, um, in like the mid two thousands, I was young then, right? Like I'm 29 now. I was like, you know, really young. A and baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A baby you could say. Yeah. And, um, they got involved, but my mom was always into natural health and wellness. <clears throat> my dad wasn't so much. He was like the sales guy, but M Miriam was like, look, these things are, have some really powerful, powerful benefits from a physiological perspective, from a mental perspective. <clears throat> and so they got involved. They started saunas. They originally were doing it for someone else. And um, then they eventually said, well, look, we can't offer the service and the quality of product that we want by doing it through another supplier. Um, and so they uh, found their own supplier and, and started selling saunas. That was back in 2008. The business was called Eye Health Saunas. Mm -hmm. I got involved uh, around like 2014, 2015. I started working more. And um Eventually in 2017, um, I took over the business from my parents running the business. <clears throat> I was 24. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Probably a bit ignorant to what, what was involved to, to run a, a business um, oh, at that size. age. And at yeah. that time, I mean, we were, we were selling maybe 650 saunas a year. We had nine wow. employees, you know. Um, but the thing that drove me through that was we weren't selling saunas, Lisa. And I say this all the time. We're helping people with their health. Yeah. Right. We were getting stories back of people saying, Hey, I used to wake up in the morning so jammed up with inflammation that I couldn't get out of bed. Right. Last week, after having your sauna for six months, I hiked a small mountain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stories like this. And that was really like resonating with me on a really deep level. It was at a time when in my early mid 20s, I was starting to discover all of the things my mum had been talking about for years. <laughs> Mums are always right. right. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Mums have that wisdom, you know. And I was starting to really discover that for myself. You know, I was I was doing some juice fasting because I had gastrointestinal issues and I was so I was taking the load off. I was feeling better because of that. I started a morning routine, you know, I was getting up, I was moving my body, I was exercising, I was sweating, I was getting my hydration in, you know, and I just started to feel better. I was cleaning up the foods I was putting in. And so then I was becoming really passionate about that at the same time, these stories were coming in about sauna. And so when I took over the business, although I may have been ignorant to what was required to run a business at the time, for me, it was like, we're doing something that is actually having a positive impact in people's lives. People are are living more healthfully because of us. And I want to be involved in that. And that's what we're doing. And so fast forward to today, that's what we do at Found Space. That is our MO. Like how can we create a remarkable experience for our clients and how can we help them achieve high levels of health? Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. So it comes from a personal journey into the health and wellness space. Okay, so let's look at uh, infrared saunas and why... Uh, let's start let's back up a little bit and just talk about sauna in general because there's a lot a lot a lot of research around sauna and its benefits and a lot of it can be taken for infrared and then we can dive into the infrared side of things as as Mm -hmm. well um i'm i mean i'm aware of um i've been a sauna fan for for well decades really um but i didn't really know I started listening to someone called Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who has a fabulous podcast, uh, scientist, and she goes on, bangs on about saunas all the time. (laughs) And uh, I've learned a lot through her. Um, And there's a study that's been done in in Finland. I don't know if you're aware of the study, but it's like 22,000 men or something that they've followed for something like 20 years. Unfortunately, no ladies, but that's, you know, typical of clinical research. (laughs) Um, But they followed them for 20 something years uh, and the results have been absolutely astounding in things like neurodegeneration and cognitive uh, health uh, and the improvements that they've seen, as well as heart, cardiovascular, uh, all of these aspects. Can you talk a little bit to that? Do you know that study at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a really interesting piece in there. I think it was like uh, likelihood of, of um, cardiovascular death was reduced by, I think it was like 26% or something like yeah. that. And likelihood of death from all cause mortality was reduced by 46 or 44. It was some a big number. Amazing right? number. Yeah. Right? From literally getting in a hot room and sweating. Right? <laughs> and what was interesting with that study was that what they found was the, it was, frequency dependent too yes. so yes you would that you will get benefit from using sauna and i say sauna entertain interchangeably here because from a physiological perspective steam sauna and infrared sauna do have some crossover and mm-hmm. then there are some differences which we can explore later uh, however what they found was one session just one session has physiological benefits which were measured for sometimes up to like over a week wow. however it was when they were using it three or more times a week that was when magic really started to happen it was that consistency uh, and so what's happening in a sauna you might ask well in a steam sauna or uh, yeah it's a little bit different so in a steam sauna you're in the hot room the the the, the steam is in the air you know and then the air's hitting the body it has Mm -hmm. to be really really hot to transfer that heat onto the body that's why in a steam sauna or a hot rock sauna where there's a bit less moisture they can be anywhere from 60 70 80 i once sat in a sauna that was 100 degrees (laughs) that was a mission you know we talk (laughs) about pushing the limits i was pushing the limits to survive in that thing i tell you yeah i'm rigged yeah and so it has to be really hot to transfer that heat on the body and then what's happening What's the body doing in that state? The body's saying, okay, I'm getting hot right now. So I'm going to start to activate my heat response in the body. I'm going to start to increase circulation, right? The blood vessels are going to dilate, vasodilation, right? We're going to start to carry more oxygen through the blood, right? If you sit in a sauna for more than 10 minutes, you will be breathing. You will notice that your breath deepens. It yep. can become faster when you're going a really intense session at the end, right? Because it's a cardiovascular workout on the body. And then ultimately the body says, okay, it's so hot. I really need to cool down. So it's going to start to pull hydration through the skin onto the surface of the skin. And Hey, we're sweating and that's it. You know, that's the crux of what's happening in a sauna. That's why they're such a beautiful tool because it isn't reliant on some specific mechanism that does this one thing in the body. It's a natural bodily process to sweat. 
and for a lot of the population they don't sweat a lot right and it's yeah. a really important way to remove toxins from the body as we know and just open up the biggest organ of the body which is the skin so when we're in sauna it's just getting the body working naturally to cool itself that's yeah, what's that- happening that's really brilliant. And I know like um, our sweat has so many things in it when it detoxes, it, 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 it brings out things like um, cadmium and mercury. So heavy metal poisoning, you know, if you've yep. got issues with that, this can be really, really, really beneficial. Um, the cardiovascular, as you mentioned, it's an, uh, I, I was talking to Bruce, your, your yep. counterpart in Australia and um, uh, Bruce Jones, and we did a, an interview last week and he was like, uh, I do my sauna in the morning after my training and it in- extends my training period. And I'm like, huh, I never thought of it that way. I'm usually doing it at the other end of the day to calm and relax and the growth hormone and, and all of that sort of good stuff. Mm. Uh, but I never thought of it actually extending my training without having to extend my training. And so that was quite an interesting one. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I published a book earlier in the year called Health Supercharge. It's about infrared sauna and, and the fun fundamentals of health and well-being and in there i talk about this concept of work right now when we're in the sauna our body is working right it's no different i just went for a bike ride this morning yeah very short one actually before i jumped in the sauna i just did like a kilometer bike ride just to warm up a bit and then i jump in the sauna now my body from a cardiovascular standpoint is working similarly not exactly the same but similarly to when i was on the bike Mm. right and so it's not uncommon for me to go for a quick 5k run in the morning get back jump straight in the sauna now i'm getting that continual cardiovascular workout for a longer period than just the run i'm not using my muscles right and it's not exactly the same but it's very analogous to so yeah. what bruce was talking about there is is spot on it's a way to continue that work uh, without actually you know lifting weights or whatever it was that you were doing yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, someone's just banged on the door and I'm like, who the heck's walking around my house? It's typical in the middle of a podcast, isn't it? Oh, that's the way it goes. You know? <laughs> yeah, this, is, yeah. this is home work life. Um, so <laughs> apologies for that, guys. Um, um, so yeah, this is a brilliant way because, you know, like we don't want to overtrain. We don't want to, sometimes we don't feel like training for another hour of running or whatever. This is a good way to extend that, keep that uh, blood flow going, keep the sweating going and all of that sort of jazz and um uh extend and, and improve our fitness exactly so, yeah. yeah but when we're in there in the sauna after a workout we're not like increasing that lactic buildup yeah. right in fact we're helping to reduce that so the recovery can be better afterwards wow. that's you a good know, point I, too yeah i really like stacking a sauna just after um a run uh, for me i i like to yep. run so i don't bike or swim i run and so it's common for me to run jump in the sauna and then i find i'm not as stiff in fact, rarely kind of stiff or tight, you know, sometimes I still need to stretch out my calves, which you can do in the sauna if you have enough space. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that to me just allows me to kind of be more consistent with whatever workouts I'm doing. I also do a lot of bouldering and and surfing as well. I'm quite active and the sauna is just a part of that during the week, you know, and you don't have to use it for as long. This is the beauty of, of infrared sauna is that you could just use it for 20 minutes, right? Get the heat in, keep the circulation moving, right? Help with that recovery after a workout and then jump out. It's not like a steam sauna where they can take a, a long time to heat up and it's a whole kind of palaver with the steam and everything like that. No, this is just, it's much easier. That's one of the, the benefits. And of the, with infrared, it is a lower temperature, but it goes into the body. So let's look, do, you dive into a little bit into the infrared side of things. Yeah. Uh, what is infrared? Why yeah. and what does it do differently from the, the standard sort of sauna? Yeah, cool. I love this conversation. I'm going to get a, a little bit sciencey. Go for uh, it. Beca- because we love I science. Know, on I, I did channel. physics and things in uni and whatever, and I really like it. So, <laughs> so th- think of think of the sun. Right, the sun emits every form of light, also known as energy. Right, every form. And so these light waves or energy waves come in different forms. Right, they come in gamma waves. They come in radio waves. They come in infrared waves. They come in visible light. That's the light that we can see with our eyes, right? Mm -hmm. It also comes in ultraviolet. This is the full spectrum of light, which comes from the sun, right? So what an infrared sauna does is it has heater panels on the walls and those heater panels in a good infrared sauna, (laughs) caveat there, those heater panels in a good infrared sauna emit a very specific wavelength of Mm -hmm. infrared, Mm -hmm. right? Now, those who may have already heard of infrared, typically over the last 10 years, 15 years, it's been far infrared. 
Yeah. Right? Now, far infrared sits between 7,000 to 10,000 nanometer wavelength of light. Oh. Right. Okay. It's quite specific. Yep. If I people can't see, but I've got my hands very wide here. If that's yep. the full spectrum of light, infrared is just a tiny, tiny section wow. okay. in the middle. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's very specific. It's real cool technology. And so that's far infrared. And then there's near infrared as well, which goes down to just before uh, red light, which is the mm-hmm. first part of the visible spectrum that we see. So in an infrared sauna, we're just getting a very specific wavelength of light a safe wavelength of light, which we otherwise get as part of what's coming from the sun, right? So again, it's a natural way to warm the body, right? It's not, it's not unnatural. It's not non-ionizing. Uh, sorry, it's not ionizing it's not radiation ionizing. like, like, uh, like, like radio waves or something or... like that. That would be <laughs> very bad. Yeah. Um, so it's a very specific wavelength of light from the sun. It's very safe. Now, the reason that we use that wavelength is because that specific energy, that wavelength of light, interacts with our body in a way that that heat can penetrate down up to 40 mil, right? I mean, some people say 45, some people say 35. It's around that point. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that it's deep, Mm -hmm. but it's not such an energetic wavelength that it is so small and energetic that it goes through the body, right? Which is what an X-ray does. It goes through the body, but doesn't go through bone. That's how we get pictures of Mm -hmm. bones, right? Makes sense. So it's very specific. Now, because it goes that deep into the body, that's why the sauna can be used at a much lower temperature, much more comfortable temperature, right? We spoke about steam sauna before and we said it can be 80 degrees in there. And I sat in a, in a hundred degrees sauna once I lasted like 10 minutes. It wasn't comfortable. Right. And the common story is people say, Alex, steam saunas are are pretty uncomfortable. Can't breathe in there. You know, I can't last very long. Yeah. Your lungs. Yep. Hits lungs and stuff too. Yeah. You really have to, you kind of got to push to the limits sometimes to yeah. be in there for a long period of time. Now, there is benefit to doing that, absolutely. Yeah. But with an infrared sauna, because that heat penetrates quite deep into the body, it feels like, although it's not what's happening, it feels like we're being warmed from the inside. Mm-hmm. Right? People say, man, I feel like I'm being warmed from the inside in an infrared sauna. And because it heats us so deeply, it feels like we're being warmed from the inside. It can be a much lower temperature to activate that heat response system that I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Right. So in a typical infrared sauna, we recommend between 45 and 55 degrees. Yep. Right? It's a soft, gentle heat. And this is where infrared sauna starts to differ from steam sauna, because although you can go really hot in an infrared, right, you can now saunas, you can go up to 70 degrees, which is great if you want to activate some human growth hormone and do some of that kind of more right. heat stress work. Yep. Right? yep. Yep. But between 45 and 55 degrees, it's not putting us into a state of sympathetic nervous system, like fight and flight, which can often happen when it's really hot for people. Oh, wow. they, go, they go into survival. Right. Yeah. And I'm telling you. And that's and why you don't it. do it late at night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yes yeah exactly because it's very right. activating for the body right wow. so wow. with the infrared sauna you go in there so we're at 50 degrees half an hour which is exactly what i just did before we got on this podcast mm-hmm. it's calming right you come yeah. out you feel vigilant you feel awake because when there's heat stress on the body it releases norepinephrine into the brain right that similar chemical that happens when we go in ice bath we feel awake we feel vibrant but we're calm right and there's a study, uh, I can't elicit who did the study, but mm-hmm. there's a study showing that infrared sauna activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Wow. Right? Which is and a I, massive thing. It's huge, know? right? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, now we're not just talking about the benefits of heat stress. We're talking about the benefits of 30 minutes of peace and quiet where you come out in the parasympathetic nervous system state God, and you're calm. That alone is worth while right. getting there. That's yeah. the magic of infrared sauna right there, right? So it can calm us down, but also can leave us feeling awake and, and vigilant. And, and So you can do that quite late at night without disrupting your sleep? Because like with sauna, um, you know, if you have it too late at night and it's too hot, then you actually can, sometimes you'll feel relaxed if you haven't gone too hard, but if you've gone too hard, it'll be actually activating. It's like you don't do an interval training session at nine o'clock at night and then try to go to sleep because you've got all this adrenaline and, and norepinephrine and all that sort of jazz <laughs> running around your body and it's just going to disrupt your sleep but at these lower levels it's actually getting you into a parasympathetic 
nervous system state. Spot on. Exactly. Wow. So one thing that we do at Found Space, which I'm really big on, I'm really big on education in general, right? Because we don't know what we don't know. And chances are we have some ritual or routine in our life that doesn't serve us. So I'm really yeah. big on that. And when it comes to sauna, what I'm really big on is educating people on how to use infrared sauna to what they want to get out of it, because there's different ways to use it depending on mm. what, what you want to achieve, right? And mm. what you said just there is really insightful because commonly what happens is people start to use sauna they get excited they've heard about human growth hormone yeah they've heard about all the benefits right oh yeah i'm gonna live longer you know i'm not gonna get alzheimer's great yeah and so they go in the sauna and they crank it up yeah they put it on I'm guilty of this. yeah i i am too <laughs> honestly i've done go it. hard or go home yeah Talk yeah yeah right and so they go really really hot and for as long as they can yeah and they come out and their body's whacked <laughs> and they're very stimulated and, and what happens is that people come to us and they say uh, we heard these were good for sleep but i ain't sleeping well and we say okay awesome we can work on that so tell me about how you're using the sauna and they go oh well i'm using it as hot as i can for 45 minutes in the mm -hmm. evening because i want to have a good sleep yeah like no <laughs> no there's a time and place for that and in the evening isn't the best time and place it's analogous to you know we talked about going for a run or going for a bike ride right would you go for a 10k run in the evening and then get home and then just have a quick shower and go straight to bed? No, no, no. you wouldn't. No, right? That just would be bad. Too awake. And it's yep. the same thing with the sauna. So if you want to use a sauna for sleep, which they are amazing for, there's two ways you can do it. You can do that really hot session in the morning, right? And you'll still feel a beautiful sleep that evening. Or you can use the sauna in the evening, right? And you can use it at a lower temperature, right? I talk about finding the baseline sauna session. So what is the sauna session that is just easy? You mm -hmm. can do for 30 to 45 minutes. You don't feel like you really have to work. You're not looking at the time, counting down how long's left. Mm -hmm. Find that baseline session. It's a little different for everyone, right? Lisa, you're fit as. So your baseline session, you might be in there at say 53 degrees. You can do that all day long, right? That's your baseline. Now for a, for a sleep sauna session in the evening, turn it down a bit, right? Let's yep. go five degrees less and let's go a little bit longer. Yeah. So it's more calming. It's that slow, like let's take the time to get the heat in there. We don't have to be breaking a sweat instantly, right? And let's just go a little bit longer in there. So we're really getting that warmth deep into the body. As deep yep. as we can, 45 minutes, right? I would also recommend a red color light. It helps balance our circadian rhythm. It tells yes. the brain it's the end of the day. Go on that. You've to relax. To my, my podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? And just calm everything down. And when we get out of the sauna, let's just have a lukewarm shower. Let's not do cold showers in the evening. <laughs> right? 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 I'm laughing because... Just what I do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all right. You know, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. But when we're talking about, but not leaving, yeah. 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 When we're trying to optimize for sleep, it's like we can use the sauna differently, right? Calm everything down. And then when we get out of the sauna, lukewarm shower, don't have a thousand lights on in the house, you know, take it easy. Maybe have a sip of chamomile tea before yep. bed and just slowly slip in and melt away into the evening. That's yes. how we would use the sauna for sleep very differently to if we we're using it in the morning and we wanted to. So there's really nuance to this conversation is what I'm getting out of it and using it for different goals because you did mention the uh, human growth hormone yeah. and there is studies that have come out and I think these were with normal saunas again, but um, sort of the steam sauna um, using the sauna three days in a row increased the production of human growth hormone, something like 1600%. And yeah. it's like, whoa, that is massive was when, you know, like I'm 53 going on 54 and I want to maintain my human growth hormone in a natural state, not bloody taking it synthetically or anything yes. like that. Um, so anything that's going to increase my human growth hormone, which is really anti-aging and, and beneficial when it comes naturally like that, is something that's on my radar. Um, does the infrared sauna do that as well? Or is that more at the higher temperatures that you get the human growth hormone? Aspect it, it, of? it is at the higher temperatures. So there was a study again out of Finland and the study was done around 74 degrees. Right. Okay. Um, now, infrared saunas typically don't go that hot. 
Mm -hmm. um, our saunas go to 70 degrees, uh, but there are ways to make it a little bit hotter as a caveat if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, however, because the heat is penetrating more deeply, um, yeah. 70 degrees for me is still really good and i still believe that that's activating human growth hormone yeah i can't pull out a, a, i can't pull out an article to prove uh, that reason being is um it's hard enough to get these studies done in finland on steam sauna which are much more widely used mm. and it's just it just hasn't been done yet no hopefully one day we have funding at found space and we can do that work <laughs> it'd be great because none of uh, like this is one of my bugbears with the whole you know the uh, clinical studies is that only things that make heaps of money get studied. And so yeah. things like what you see in the background, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which I'm a huge proponent of and saved my mum's life twice, just, just yeah. gets completely ignored. Well, not completely. There are people that have done studies, but they have to fight like shit to get the studies done. Yeah. And this is where a lot of the things that could be really helping us don't get the clinical research that they would otherwise get because there's no billion dollar price tags on the end of it because they can sell a drug. Um, yep. And that's, you know, unfortunately, just the way the system is. Um, so I understand that, but then probably if we look at the mechanism of action of what's going on, there would, you know, would, it would, it would be um, plausible that human growth hormone would be being released as well. Yeah, exactly right. And, and then you can probably talk more to this than I can, but then it's just a way to stack it. What are the other things that we can do to optimize human growth hormone in the morning? For me, like I'm, I, I'm a big proponent of fasting. I've done a lot of yep. extended fasts myself and, and intermittent fast every day like it's just a normal thing um and so there's some science showing human growth hormone is really mm -hmm. elevated in a fasted state too so and and similar with weight resistance uh, training yeah right so for me it's like okay well how can i it's pretty simple fast like yeah. not eat in the morning and then do a weight resistance exercise training and then jump in the sauna really hot for 20 to 30 minutes right that to me is like a really nice stack to to really get human growth hormone activated I love that approach. I love that whole multifaceted approach because uh, uh, in, in everything that I do when I'm working with people or whatever, there's a, it's the, the, the problem in the middle and there's a 10,000 ways that we're going to attack it. And that it could be a, a combination of food and fasting and hyperbaric and saunas and exercise and uh, time in nature and meditation. All of these things are valid pieces of the puzzle. There's never one thing that yes. you, you're right, you take this one pill and you're going to be fixed for life, you know? <laughs> it doesn't Hold work on. like that. <laughs> uh, totally, you know, and it's it's no different with sauna. It's no different with fasting or whatever that might be. It has to be a multi-pronged approach. Yeah. Right? We need to look at the fundamentals of, of health and well-being and see if we can tackle it through all of those, right? Oh, and if absolutely. we say the same thing to our customers, like, yeah, sauna is amazing. <laughs> like. Yep. It is powerful, right? And it addresses many fundamentals within the one experience, sure. However, if you continue to put the wrong foods in or not exercise right or live in a stressed environment, like sauna will help, but it's not going to make a massive difference. Yeah. Right? We yep. need to, it's, it's part of a bigger approach to our overall well-being. Yeah, and that's what I love about you and your your approach and the way that you've gone. Yeah, it's a company that's selling a product, but it's a company that's recognizing that, it's like with me, I, I, yes, I sell supplements and yes, I have programs and yes, I do whatever, but at the basis of it, I want people to get well and have long, healthy lives. And I'm passionate about that because I've experienced shit in my family that I don't want other people to go through. Uh, and so I'm very passionate about helping people be in that preventative space, which I think in our current medical model we don't do well we're very good at the band-aid approach we're very good at you know broken bones and surgeries and things but when it comes to this type of conversation there's a complete lack of understanding about anything around the whole you know nutrition and in these complementary things that we can be doing to support our health mm. uh, and i think that whole mentality of like you you're approaching it we're here to help our customers our clients our people get healthier live longer live healthier better lives um and, you know because you know that at the end of the day that's going to benefit everybody all the way around and it's a nice space to be in isn't it yeah absolutely it certainly feels good you know like we said at the start i run a podcast called finding space and if we have someone on that if i have a guest on right 
and I may not completely be like an advocate for what they're talking about, or, or I might really be, but we have people on that know what they're talking about, right? And are experts in their field. Now, if someone just listens to an episode that I did and they get something from that episode, and that's the only interaction they have with found space and they go away and it changes their life, even in a small way, I'm happy, right? Mm. I don't mind if I never sell them a sauna or they never buy a water filter from us or they never engage with anything else. Like that's it because they got what they needed from us. And that's what it's about. You know, talking more to your point there, I'm, you know, if I could tell a quick story, Mm, go for it. how did I become so uh, proactive with, with my health? Because I grew up in this business and there were always sick people coming through the door. Always. It was very, irregular back you know 10 15 years ago to have someone coming to look at a sauna who was wanting to get human growth hormone activated in the morning right? <laughs> people like me people yeah like it, heck. <laughs> it just wasn't a thing back then we were dealing with people who had worked on a farm for 30 years and had so much toxicity in their body that they couldn't think straight and that when they used sauna their sweat was orange you know we were dealing wow. with people who whatever they were doing in their lifestyle led to chronic inflammatory conditions, arthritis, fibromyalgia, you know, there's four and a half million Aussies in Australia currently diagnosed with arthritis alone, debilitating illnesses. And they were coming to us because they wanted to be, they wanted something to help, you know? So I got to see this time and time again, people coming really looking for help because they needed it. Right. At the same time, part of my journey has been dealing with my dad who ended up being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Right. And now dad was someone, as I said, mom was the natural health person. Dad was not, no matter how much. <laughs> Same in my family. Him. Yeah, right. It's common. <laughs> it's common. And so I, I observed the lifestyle he lived and the lifestyle he lived was stressful, right? He was, his business was his life. It was chronically stressed. He drank regularly, one to two glasses of wine a night and some more on the weekends. He didn't eat well, right? And because he was doing those three things, he didn't sleep well right? The stress and the booze was not allowing him to get into deep sleep, into REM sleep, right? Now, chronic alcohol consumption, chronic poor sleep and chronic stress all have been very well linked and documented to be linked with Alzheimer's. Yeah, absolutely. He was diagnosed actually in the end of 2016, Mm -hmm. right? And now he's in a really bad way. You know, he, um, he can't yeah. speak anymore and you know it's it's a real shame and going to spend time with him and going to meet other people who are in a similar place is really can i swear really yeah. fucking motivating yes <laughs> to do something in, for to my health but it. also share the message yeah. right because chronic drinking is still a thing in australia and, and dealing in a living in a stressed environment is still a thing and not putting the emphasis on the good foods that we put in the body and the importance of sleep and our hydration and these things that we're talking about today, you know, these things, if we put focus there and we prioritize them, we can avoid going down an unhealthy track, whether that's Alzheimer's or it might be diabetes or it might be cardiovascular disease, yep. whatever it might be. There's a long list, unfortunately. Yep. Um, and that's where, that's where we can head if we're not putting these things as a priority. And so talking to someone like yourself just (laughs) hearing what you're saying you know i love it because it's totally on point and these are the conversations we need to be having and my message to everyone is don't don't wait until something like that will happen right and i've been lucky to be able to witness unhealthy people for a long time right but most people don't get to see that right Mm. they just know a few people who have maybe passed away from cancer or something but it's not directly affecting them in their life or if it is it's one off and often it's not enough unfortunately the way that the human psyche works we need a lot of repetition of these things before we take action you know yeah and uh, thanks for sharing that very personal story because it yeah i i I have you know um my listeners know my story with my mum who was you know morbidly obese and she you know was always focused on her kids and looking after every other bugger and not looking after herself and had an aneurysm and ended up you know i've been digging our way out of the ship for the last six years and and bringing her back from a baby to being a fully functioning person again thanks to this multi-pronged approach and this is why i do what i do and then unfortunately going through uh another journey with my dad 
um, who passed away um, just near on two years ago. And my dad was, he, he smoked and he, and he ate pies and fish and chips every day. Yeah. And he, he was fit. He was outside. He was doing things all day, every day. And that was his saving grace. And he got to 81 um, being, you know, like just beating all the odds until he didn't. And, um, you know, if I can prevent people going through those experiences and we can't, you know, you and I aren't God and we can't prevent everything happening. My mum since developed cancer and then we were told she was going to die from that. And then I went the whole metabolic approach to cancer and it took me 12 weeks of hard out, hard out. And uh, tumours were gone. And now we're like 10 months later and there's no sign of the, the tumours there. Um, and that's on a person who they didn't think would make Christmas last year. Yeah. Um and was someone who had had massive brain damage previously and been through so much already. Um, and I'm, so I'm, I'm a fighter, you know, and I'm a, a, someone who does not just take the first doctor's word for it that comes along. Cause otherwise my mum would have been long gone. Um, and, and I take this very multi-pronged approach to everything I do and persistent. There's a, I have a book out called relentless and it is called relentless for a reason. Cause I am every day, Every, you know, my whole structure of my day is, uh, and that's why we had to do it early in the morning, Alex, because I have yeah. to get my mum and she has to go to training and that's my priority. She has to do certain things at certain times of the day. And that's, you know, um, that's my priority. Um, and, and so this drives the passion to be able to share this information. And I can see that comes through with with you as well um and your dad you know like we just don't understand all these things and when when your dad and my dad were growing up and my dad had been a lot older than yours but you know they just you know they just we didn't know any of this stuff and we are lucky that we get to talk to and you and i especially we get to talk to top scientists top researchers get the latest greatest information that no other human in the history has had access to this information we are sharing this bloody precious resource of information through our interviews and what we do um and hopefully it's it's spreading you know it's a ground roots movement um i'm no dave asprey and you know we're not <laughs> <laughs> billionaires and we can't get the message out there like we'd like to yeah. but one by one by one we can educate and, and for you it's infrared sauna and being a part of that whole wellness journey with your clients and i think that's just absolutely brilliant so thanks for sharing that personal story because i know it's not you know it's not easy and for you to take over the company at such a young age you must be a pretty driven amazing person you know, like, uh, <laughs> I didn't know which way was up at 29 to be honest or 25 when you took it over it's just like oh I couldn't have run a company of the size you had how has that been you know from a mental perspective and dealing also with your dad's situation how how did you do that just from a you know a high performance sort of perspective how did you do that yeah. Uh, you know, I, for me, I think it really came back to, it just came back to belief. You know, I, I just believed in what we're doing so wholeheartedly and I, I cared, you know, and like you said, I was pretty fucking relentless too. You know, <laughs> that there wasn't at, at a time, there just wasn't an option other than to do that or not to do that. Sorry, but to, um, to make it work, yep. you know, and, and I had a vision and have a vision and we're creating that vision right from the start that was there and it was just this it was just inside me you know and wow. i don't know when i was younger you know i went out and i i did the whole clubbing and all that sort of stuff the usual mm. kind of stuff who the hell yeah. am i what am i doing on you know on this planet you know but it was just <laughs> never for me i don't know i just there was always something inside me that knew that there were bigger things that i, I wanted to create and 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 manifest in this world you know and so it was just hard work that you know one thing one of many things that my dad really taught me was work hard you know and especially for those first few years you know even up till now really that's that's my mo and if something's gone wrong i'll get my hands dirty you know we have a yeah. team of um, just under 20 full-time now and then we have wow. a bunch more um, contractors around australia and new zealand and even now I'll get my hands dirty if I have to, you know, yeah. in, in fact, I like doing that. Yeah. And it's just, that's just been how I've gone about it, you know, and wanting to provide a good experience for our customers and a great quality product and um, really help 
get this message out there in whatever way that we can. So what was it? Yeah, it was hard at times, most certainly. And it's been big, you know, there's been big things happen with, with dad and, and, and going through business and who knows what the next 12, 24 months are going to throw at us, <laughs> yeah. you know, and COVID in the middle, oh, yeah, God. COVID in the middle yeah. and yeah. What, whatever's <laughs> coming up next, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I've just had that belief, you know, and there's been those really dark, deep moments when things aren't going right. Yeah. And there's just this voice in there. It's like, Alex, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it. You know, you can do it. And <laughs> sometimes I really have to, to channel that. And it's no yeah. different to, you know, uh, running a half marathon or something like that. You get to a point where you're in there and you're like 15 Ks deep and you're like, yeah. oh, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that voice. And it's like, yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> hang around with me too long you'll end up running 100 milers and stuff yeah well i know i mean my half marathons have got nothing on your ultras you know oh I'll, no I'll get there one day <laughs> no no and i don't recommend it to be fair <laughs> stick to yeah. it stick to what you're doing it's probably healthier <laughs> let me tell you running 100 miles it's you know those types of things are a great uh, achievements you know when you look back and you go wow i did that i took that box but as far as longevity and health is concerned <laughs> not 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 the way forward for me anymore you know um yeah. so while I, you know, I think uh, you learn great things when you push yourself physically, yeah. but um, you, for me now at my age, it's more about longevity and, and mm. anti-aging and, mm. and being functionally fit. And that mm. looks different now for me yeah. than what I was doing, you know, but I'm glad I've done lots of cool, cool stuff along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's really something in that, you know, especially with physical exercise and going to the extremes, you, when you go through something like that, there's this belief that comes with it, which is unquestionable. You know, for me, it was a couple half marathons. After running two half marathons, I had that thought of like, nah, I don't know if running double that distance would be the best thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so um, it serves my purpose a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, however, like going through that, it's like, I, if I can do that, man, I can do anything. You know, I, I've done a really long water fast before. Wow. And I'm like, man, if I can do 30 days on water <gasps> alone, like, you're kidding. Yeah, no. Wow. So it was, it was, it was My pretty extreme, <laughs> you know, but if I can do that, um, I, I, I can do anything, you know, and, that, and that's, Seriously. although it might be extreme and, and may not be the best thing, you know, whether it's running an ultra or doing a really long fast, whatever that might be, there is a belief that comes with that. You know, yeah. So, and you've so. learned certain yeah. things from it and yeah. I'll take my hat off to you I've never done that and that, that takes massive I'd run I'd rather run across the Sahara than not go, <laughs> go without food for 30 days <laughs> it felt like running across the Sahara at times <laughs> I bet it did. Um, but you, you, you obviously understand some essence cells and autophagy and upregulating yeah. all those things and detoxing and, and the benefits of it. You've just had the actual discipline to do it for that long and I haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still like my food too much. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I'm hearing repeatedly on my podcast from all these top doctors and scientists, intermittent fasting and fasting and fasting. And I'm like, yeah. oh, geez, it must be right. <laughs> you know, and it is. I do do intermittent fasting. Um, yeah. But I certainly haven't uh, managed to do the super long stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm working on myself. I'm a work in progress. Um, oh, so, Alex, just coming back to the infrared sauna. Yeah. So, what? Uh, so, your your saunas have uh, certain light frequencies. We've got near infrared and infrared, and then we've got the heat aspect. Um, now. You know, I, I've been guilty of this, and uh, I didn't know anything about infrared saunas. I went online, I bought the first infrared sauna that I could find, a cheap infrared, and now I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, what is the difference between um, a quality product and a not quality product? And what are yeah. the things that we need to be aware of, whether they're buying from you or somewhere else, doesn't matter. But what things do we need to be? Um, yeah, great question. So, First thing first is with a not great quality product, it can't be guaranteed that the heaters are emitting infrared, right? And so having a wavelength report from the, the, the company is important, right? You want to know that you're getting between, if you're looking at far infrared, you want to know you're getting between 7,000 to 10,000 nanometers, mm -hmm. also known as seven to 10 microns. That's mm -hmm. the far infrared wavelength, right? right. So, a cheap sauna, they won't be able to give you that. Second right. thing is 
Um, you want to check that their EMF levels are low, electromagnetic fields. Um, there, there's some good companies out there, including ourselves, where the EMF is really low, like one, two milligauss, these kind of things. It's really mm -hmm. nice. That's really important. Um, and the third thing is make sure that they're certified. They're electrically certified to your region, um, whether that's in Australia or New Zealand or America, or wherever that is. Make sure there's a certification there because it is an electrical product and it's going in your house. You want to make sure it's safe. Those are like the kind of fundamental, like no questions asked. The sauna that you get should have those things, right? And then yep. it comes down to the quality of the timbers, you know, make sure that they're kiln dried for a period of time. Um, typically saunas are a, a hemlock, a Canadian hemlock, or, or there's a Canadian cedar. There's also some aspen that's a bit more expensive. Um, there's basswood as well. So these are common timbers. Make sure that it's a good quality, like first grade timber that's used. Um, go and like have a look at the sauna if you can get an idea of the craftsmanship at the end of the day a sauna is or can be a beautiful piece of furniture wherever you're going to put it right there's a lot of really badly made and ugly saunas out there right it's something that you're going to put somewhere so you want it to look nice but you also want it to be good quality go and feel it like grab the walls give it a shake you yep. know that'll give you a really good idea as to how well it's made yeah. Right. Are they using really thin timbers or are they using thick, sturdy timbers? Right. These are important because we're going to be getting in there. We're going to be sweating. We're going to be moving about. You want it to be solid. There's nothing worse. And I've sat in some pretty cheap saunas in my time. There's nothing worse than sitting in there and it kind of moves around All a bit or like move. the heaters flex or something. It's like, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, so build quality is important. The sauna should last you 10 to 15 years. Yep. Right. And a, a $1,500 sauna online won't. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then check the check about like check their reviews and, and, and find out what their service is like. Right. Because a, there's no moving parts that it, saunas don't need to be regularly serviced. However, it's a product you're going to have for 10, for 10 to 15 years. Now, it's no different to something like a washing machine. Right. You want to have that for a long time, but one day you're probably going to need to get it serviced in one way, shape, or form. So make sure that there's that backup there with the company. Make sure they've been around for a long time check their reviews, see what people are saying about them because it's important because what will happen is you'll fall in love with your sauna. <laughs> I yeah. know that, right? Because <laughs> they're really, really cool and they're really powerful and you'll love it. And then one day it'll stop working and you'll go and try and talk to that company and they don't exist anymore or they don't have a service person in your area. And then you go months sometimes without having your sauna fixed, right? Yep. That's yep. why for us, Found Space, we have service people in every major city where we are, wow. which is Australia and New Zealand, because mm -hmm. it's important that if the sauna stops working for whatever reason, or it needs a little tweak here or there, we can go out there and get that sauna working for them wow. really quickly. That network. Exactly. I'll give you a quick story on that. During COVID, there was, um, I had a customer that was um, making a bit of a, a bit of a fuss, it seemed like to us, right? And it was just because one of the lights in a sauna wasn't, wasn't working, right? And we couldn't get down there because of, what was COVID going on with COVID yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and she started being a bit, um, she wasn't very happy with us for a period of time. And I ended up going out personally to fix it once we could. <laughs> and I just, cause I, I was like, man, there's what's going on here. Like this yeah, not yeah. normally, this doesn't normally become a problem, you know, but it really was. So I went out and I just wanted to like, get to know this person and see what was happening. And she said to me, Alex, she said, during COVID, my life fell apart couldn't work anymore, couldn't see anyone. Yeah. And your sauna was so amazing. I loved it so much. It was the only thing in my life that was working for me. Nothing yeah. else was going my way. And then that bloody light broke. And I just <laughs> so I'm felt take like it my out whole you. life was falling apart. You know, There's always a backstory. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it was a real insight that um, you know, those things are important. And the sauna does become a really valuable part of our life. Yeah. You know, I really miss my sauna if I'm away and I can't sauna where I am, you know, and that's a common thing that we hear from people. Yeah. And so it's important that whatever sauna company you go with can look after you down the track, yeah. whether that's two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. Um, that's a really important piece. And then lastly, as well, as, as we've kind of spoken about at Found Space, now I'm just plugging Found Space now, but <laughs> it's really important for us to, to educate our clients on some of the things we've been talking about today, Lisa. So what we find is that people start using sauna, they start feeling great. They start feeling the benefits and then they want to do something else in their lifestyle 
to, to take their health to another level, right? That's why we provide education, online tutorials. That's why we do our, our podcast. That's why we give clients the book on how to use sauna for pain relief, recovery, sleep, detox, these kind of things, because Amazing. we want people to get really inspired and learn more about sauna and learn more about how they can move their body differently or how they can put different nutrition in their body or how they can hydrate better or whatever it might be. Yeah, we want yeah. people to be inspired and continue on that journey because the sauna is a real powerful catalyst for people. Yep. And then it's about building the rituals into our life to really take oh, our health to a higher level. So that lovely. for me is really important. Other sauna companies don't seem to think that, <laughs> um, <laughs> but maybe they're missing the point. I think they are. For me, that's a really important piece because that kind of continues us on this journey and that's what we do at found space really well yeah no absolutely brilliant alex you've been absolutely wonderful thanks for sharing your 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 insights your personal story your background as to why and what and what infrared does and why we need to be adding this where possible to our lives um you've you've been absolutely fantastic i'm going to put all the links down below but just tell everybody where they can find you at found space yeah absolutely so you can find us at foundspace.co.nz or you can find us on Instagram at found space, uh, sorry, found underscore underscore space. Um, <laughs> if you're in Australia, you can find us at foundspace.com.au. It's the same Instagram handle. And you can find me on Instagram at, at Alex Tyson, the number 37, Alex Tyson 37. If you want to follow mm -hmm. me, you'll see lots of photos of fruit and books <laughs> and nature. <laughs> so if that's what you're into, you can follow me. Oh, um, I'll go and give me a follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's about it. You should, you'll be able to find us in, in all those places. I also have a book called Health Supercharged, um, how to take your health to a higher level with infrared sauna and health Brilliant. fundamentals. So if you want to check that out, you can buy it on Amazon. Okay, we'll put all those links down below. Alex, thank you very much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.